The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Shall it show thyself approved unto God, our man that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. First Corinthians twelve thirteen tells in the power of one spirit we have all been baptized into one body. This word has not been properly understood by several men leading to many denominations and many heretic teachings in the present apostasy period. The men who think that he has the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher and he wants to come up and stand in the church and these people who have been earlier following to another person of the same church who started it and if they could have some breakup particularly the so-called great churches being headed by Zach Punin in my place where I reside in Karnataka. Since they had some problem with the elder of the church and the other church who were following there, the own brothers, he was not happy with the practices of that elder. He was not happy with the lies which he was been communicating for them. The representative of the church member, he tells, when we go to the church, as if by forsaking him and forgiving them, it was as if from the pulpit they were bombing him with the words, directly. So what did they think? It is better for us to divide from the church and start our own church in their own home. The principle of the failure to understand of 1 Corinthians 12, 13, baptized into one spirit, is no longer been available in the church. That's not only a fate of that particular church, but such kind of a churches are ample today. In fact, even the other man who met, he tells, the people who are going to that church, do you know who they were? They are from my church. And then this person doesn't know from where he has robbed this members from other church. And why it is happening? No proper foundation in the word of the Lord. It is Lord who shall direct you. It is Lord who shall add to your church the members, not you rob from other church. Divide the church and take those members and you start up a new church. As if church has become a small enterprise and a business ceremony. And the pastor is an entrepreneur for them because he's holding the church as the ultimate criteria. How shame and pathetic it is that this man who occupy the pulpits have forgot the true meaning that we all have been baptized into one spirit. In the word, we find that believers are members of Christ, members of his own body, and members one of another. There is the only membership which could be found is to be baptized into that membership of the royal family of God. And why do we seek any other, any other thing? Is not this membership enough? The church is not a voluntary association or a club that men join there or live at will, as in the case in the sects. Because the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That's the great truth. When you are prepared, it is Lord who shall send you the hearers. When you are prepared and when you are upright, it is Lord who shall add to your church. And these church members will not divide from you because do you know why? Because you are a communicator of the truth. And this communication of the truth, because they don't have any other words, that's what Apostle Peter told. To our Lord, where shall we go, Lord, leaving you? You have the words of life. 
the pastor teacher who has been given this bona fide gift has the uniquely communication spiritual leadership gift to communicate Bible doctrine. Man cannot depart from him no matter what it is. Do you know why? If he really loves the Lord, he will beheld the glory of Lord God Almighty. If this pastor teacher really fears Jehovah, because he is a messenger, he is an angel of Lord God Almighty, he preaches the truth and he corrects them from the truth itself. No partiality. The way how Hananias and Sapphire are lying to Lord God, the Holy Spirit were dead. The man who is standing in the pulpit will be having fear. Because it is his words that we are dealing with. They have been dead because of that one monetary value of physical realm. Which is no worth at all. How much more horrible it would be for you to stand at the feet of Lord God Almighty's stands and tell that you are not lying. But rather you are communicating the truth. Who knows in and out. We may try to cover our nakedness with the clothes. But with Lord everything is open. And that Lord knows better what you are doing than we. We will hear the word of the Lord when we sit in the pulpit. That Lord knows better what we are for him. And what we will be for him. And that Lord knows whether this church has been origined. Because Lord has added to them, to that church. Today the principle of this church has been lost. Today the church have been come around by breaking one church, by dividing other church. By grabbing this members, by grabbing that members. Ultimately tomorrow some other person will start and he will grab this members. And in my country like India, where if I need to travel 3,000 kilometers by train, the direction of the train will be forward and backward again. Because the destinations and the routes are like that. If it, is goes, if it goes in the forward direction for some kilometers, again then in the next direction it will change. The engine will change the direction and it goes to the back end and it pulls towards the backward direction for some extent. And from there again it changes the direction. It comes to the front part and again it goes to some other direction to that end. Nearly three times or four times it needs to change the direction so that it can reach the capital of this country known as New Delhi. And the people who are traveling from this Karnataka end knows very well what it is to travel 2,000 kilometers in the train and how many times the direction will be changed. That is what it is happening today in the churches as well, dear brethren. This church to some extension. That church to some extension. From that church to move to the third church to some extension. The Lord has not added them to that church because the minister doesn't have that bona fide gift to be added. Because the bona fide gift member leads them. He doesn't drive them for butchery. He leads them. He cares for them. Not telling to the point... That if he gets a good proposal for this girl, he doesn't search that in any other church, but he wants to add that in his own church, because that boy and this girl should be continuing to that church. And that is happening today as a small business in the churches around. And that is the fate of my country like India. How much more it is in the Western, we do not know. Do you think Lord is adding them, Lord is marrying them, it is Lord's will for them? And one idiotic clock, he wants to construct the church in the form of a Noah boat, Noah's ark. And he tells only this church, the people who come to my church, they will be raptured. And foolishly, this man don't have thoughts in them, don't have light in them. Never seen the word of the Lord in their entire life. Simply go there, give monthly tithes. Beg for him to pray on behalf of him. Give him all the necessary of his life. 
think as if they are really pleasing the Lord. Because this man is an ordained minister from the Lord and he's been told to construct this Noah's Ark. And the people will fall to that church. Only that church will be raptured. What a sheer art of a blasphemy that is happening around in the churches today. Until and unless Lord adds to your ministry, there is no way that growth of the church could happen. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved, as been written in Acts. In the power of one spirit, we have all been baptized into one body. Our Lord sets the members in the body by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They are set there by divine power, and this is the divine organization of the church of God, whether you believe it or not. The divine organization of the Church of God demands divine power, and the pastor teacher who communicates them the truth under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is the ultima of divine power for them. No attractiveness, no emotional based worship services, no XYZ. If they have been bounded by the divine power, that organization of the Church driven by divine purpose, will be ruling forever and forever. Because it is Lord who has been present in the church. No other member, no other man, no other method, no other techniques, no other administration, no other best management techniques can run that church, dear brethren, whether you believe it, take it or not. Only the power of divine mentorship only the power of divine attitude, only the knowledge of Bible doctrine, empowered by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith the gift of a pastor teacher given to a male believer to rightly deliver the word of truth, his responsibility, his obligation is to inculcate the truth to the hearers who are positive for his word of doctrine by a consistent of accuracy in exegesis, isagogical and categorical explanation will empower and organize the church to be driven in the power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dear brethren. As long as that process is happening, that is a right church in the sight of the Lord. And if there is no other method than that, trying to attract crowd, telling false witnesses, false blasphemies, that church is not a church. And never they will realize what is the truth that we have in Christ. Never. That's why many men they have been led into astray. Many men have been divided in the church. They have lost the true purpose why they have been kept alive in the church. And that is how it is happening today in the pulpits, dear brethren. Men are merely interested and they are happy to get and pay the membership fees every month for burial and marrying, but not for learning and edifying in the word of the law. Not the membership of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in their lives. And this man, they're happy by paying the membership fees every month for their family, for their kids, for their wife. And they think this is a beautiful church because it is for our community, it is for our people. Still having the differentiations about the communities, about the caste and the creeds. Not able to understand that all they have been baptized into one royal family of Christ. By one spirit. And why do they pay the membership fees, do you know? To attend for the marial functions. The anniversaries of death as well as for marriage or for birth christening ceremonies. Because if I don't go, and if I don't fill the membership fees, the pastor and the pastorate committee will not come to my home for any great or good or bad occasion. Nor they will give me a burial place in the cemetery where we need to have a letter from the church to, be, to go for a burial point. That's why they maintain their membership. 
The man is not going to the church to learn Bible doctrine or to be edified in the word of the Lord, but he is making himself preserved a place for his death burial. And for him and for his family is making it. That's why till he dies, he wants to pay tithes to that church. That's why till he dies, he wants to pay a membership fellowship to that church. And that's why he wants to join the church. Not able to realize that he is a professor, he is a saint. Not able to realize he has to teach the angels about the doctrine. None of the prophets or the apostles were worried about their death and their burial. Lord knew where it would be. And they knew the power of Lord. They waited upon the Lord. In fact, even Enoch, when he was walking with the Lord, till there he has not tasted the death. Elijah has not tasted the death. Know you not what Lord is capable of? And they want to go to the church for their burial place to be given there. Not able to walk in with the Lord, not able to be under the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, nor able to stand in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit. But they want the temporary sacrifice, the temporary solutions. And that is what the churches are doing today. Lord God the Holy Spirit in the power of one spirit being baptized into one body. Lord sets the members in the body by Lord God the Holy Spirit. They are set there by divine power because it is a divine organization and it is a church of God. Because we need no other organization apart from the church of God and divine organization under the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. The church exists by the mighty operation of God through the working mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and as the fruit of redemption the believers simply confess their membership by meeting together according to the word of God alone, not according to the caste or to the community. And it is not because of the plurality of the elders it is because of the teaching mental ministry of a past teacher in the church. Whether you believe it, take it or not. The church exists as a divine organization, let us remember it, and inculcate in our minds, because our minds will be relieved from all thought of joining this or that. Why? Since there is no responsibility, Assuredly, there is a lot of responsibility upon each and every member of the church. It is not only the duty of the pastor teacher to edify the church. Every member should work effectively to the praise of his glory so that the manifestation of Christ could be found there. As membership of Christ, whom God has set in the church, our responsibility is to flow the directions given to us in such as the word of the Lord God demands in the virginal exegesis, categorical and isogical explanation of biblical truth. We have been told not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together because we have been told to come in and join with the divine organization so that it is the food for you in daily inculcation for your spirit. The church is the university, the dean being the pastor teacher, you being a professor, you need to learn and take in the food. The saints meet together, not as members of this or that sect or caste or creed or community, but simply they believe and they come as believers and they are the members of Christ, baptized into one spirit, into one body, by not God the Holy Spirit. And as the pastor teacher teaches them, simply obedience to the word of the Lord is being demanded. And the one who are mature enough can turn out to become missionaries. And the one who are capable enough with the gift of a pastor teacher can work around to teach to the Sunday school or to the youth or to the women fellowship. Because pastor has a lot more to teach for you in his entire course of life from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. He doesn't even have time for his own works. Far less the church can think it is his duty to do and to bury, to bury, to do this, to do that. As the people grow up, they have been given to exhort one another. The elders have been made for tables. And the 
duty of the pastor teacher is to communicate the truth. As they grow up maturely, the bona fide gift will cause them to realize what it is to walk in obedience to the word of the Lord. It is not organizing a church, nor is there any need of anything at all of any kind. All that is needed in the church is obedience. Our Lord said, where two or three of me met together unto my name, there I am in the midst of them. Gathering together, thus is the responsibility of the saints, under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And when gathered does, he is in the midst of us, to be owned as Adam and the Lord, and to give his sanction to whom? So that to what is done in his name could be sanctioned to the praise of his glory in his grace. And this sanction is what many people, they have been totally neglecting. Because today the Christian's privilege of having an impact as an invisible hero by reaching to that spiritual maturity through the church. Because church is a production unit to produce those winner believers, those believers who beheld the glory of Lord to the maximum glorification of Christ. A church is a place where the believer will turn out to become an invisible hero. Only by learning the word of the Lord, by passing all the three stages of his unique spiritual life. Today, the Christian privilege of having impact as an invisible hero is being absolutely infringed. Because many ministers have neglected the responsibility to teach their listeners Bible doctrine. But instead, they go at them to become involved in emotionalism, involved in personality cults, involved in church programs, involved in social work or political activism. And trends in today's Protestant Christianity show signs of an imbalance which emphasize the visible at the expense of an invisible, the material at the expense of the spiritual, the believers over him at the expense of the inner dynamics of Bible doctrine in the soul. That is what it is happening today in the churches, and it is not a bond by the ministry of Ludgate, the Holy Spirit. That's why the churches have been broken. That's why the sects have been divided. That's why the community caste and creeds are coming into place. Because of the negligence of the responsibility of the pastor teacher laid down upon his shoulders who has been neglecting, neglecting, neglecting to inculcate the word from the original language of the scriptures through isagogical, categorical, and exegetical exposition of biblical truth. That's why the churches have been broken around. This problem has been taking root because of the ignorance of dispensations. The overwhelming of majorities of Christians today do not know what God has provided for them or why he has given them so much. After salvation, what if you could ask anyone? They do not even know whether they have been saved because of the guilt conscious of their eternality question which has been asked for them constantly, whether he has been saved or not, whether he has been working or not. What does God desire the Christian to do? If believers do not realize that they belong to this great royal family, this unique dispensation of the church age, termed out as Alekene Ketesis, how can they fulfill their destinies? How can they execute the protocol plan of God for the church age if they do not know such kind of a plan really exists? Ignorance undercuts every good intention. No matter how a Christian desires to make his life count for God, if he is ignorant for God's plan, he fails to glorify God. At best, the impact of his life is fleeting, no sooner achieved than dissipated. At worst, his impact is for evil as he inadvertent struggles in Satan's cause to improve this devil's world. And he forms a devil's witnessing church. Not the royal ambassador's church, royal witnessing for Christ, because there is no truly the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So, dear brethren, where two or three are met in the name of the Lord, there the presence of the Lord is there. And he will establish that church because he bonds you with the ministry of God and the Holy Spirit. He unites you with the divine organization. And the pastor teacher leads them. And he never drives them for butchering. His work is to feed you the word of the Lord and you take it under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as per the word of the Lord demands for obedience. And you grow up for the inculcation of the truth. And if you are not interested to know this truth, Lord help you. Tomorrow we shall continue this course. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that they believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth is for you, for by simple act of faith, which is very next to your soul, which meant to say, believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your positive volition, and you shall be saved. And whereas 
for the believers the mandate is very clear grow in grace and the knowledge of bible doctrine and search the scriptures diligently so that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free and whereas for the pastor teachers the mandate is very clear preach the word kerosothon logan be prepared in season or out of season so that the word that you learn will be the ultima for you and this word is what dear brethren because it is Bible doctrine, our breath, Bible doctrine, our food, and Bible doctrine is the purpose why we have been kept alive. And for the diameter of my witnesses, wherewith you have been called, the indwelling Trinity is your witness, Bible in our hands is your witness, because each and every word, whether you have been taught clearly or not, and besides our hearers who could be witness for this truth, the nature and the entire angelic cost will be our witness. So which way you go, dear brethren, you decide. Ultimately, we all need to appear in the judgment seat of Christ. And what you have done, how much you have done, how much you have done or not, Lord knows, recorded every day. And every day we've been poured down as a libation unto Christ or not, Lord knows very well. So which way you go, dear brethren, you decide. But ultimately, be mindful of the words which they have been written for us. And we need to answer what you have done in our body. Whether it was for the praise of His glory, or for the praise of your own glory, by making men deceivers in the word of the Lord and not teaching them ice concept, which is isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation, but rather teaching them the useless and worthless things of this earth. So which way you go, you decide. Whether you teach them exegesis, and be faithful to the ministry wherewith the Lord has called you and appointed you with the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, or even be unfaithful to him and try to think that God could be mocked easily thinking that if you could sow to the wind you will not reap war wind but rather something fruit what you sow that you reap dear brother be careful to the ministry where the Lord has called you to the high calling to serve him in the heavenly government to employ what we have been ordained for the praise of his glory in his grace so which way you go you decide Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord, guard the whole spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge. For we ask it in the name of King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the bright morning star. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior name, we pray, Father. Amen.